All right, good morning up to church. It's uh, Father's Day, so happy Father's Day. We're uh, glad you got to celebrate with us, and hopefully you got to experience a little bit of uh, donuts. And who doesn't like bacon? So bacon's one of those great God gifts that we've been given. And we're definitely thankful for that as well. And I, what Tony and Amanda shared this morning, I think, is uh, kind of ideal and, and fitting. And whenever you hear this idea that uh, about fathers, we all have a different impression of that, about whether it's a good experience or bad, whether we like it or not, we respect them uh, or not. We all have a different idea or opinion. And it's fitting because we're going through this series, uh, talking about this design that we're all designed and created for this purpose. And even though that we may all have different ideas of what that, what that spells out or what that means to us, the Bible really, it really spells this out for us. And that's what we've been learning through this series is that we have a creator who created us for a purpose. And if we're ever going to invent something, if we're ever going to make something, if we're ever going to build something, it's because we have a, a purpose for it. This is the reason why you know, we built our homes. This is the reason why automobiles was invented. I mean, ain't you thankful that you have to travel here today by horse? I mean, granted, I mean, horses are cool, but I'm thankful that somebody had the initiative to come up with an automobile. I'm very thankful for that. And even though everybody told him he was crazy, and uh, Henry Ford went to this one bank to get a loan for this, and he said, Mr. Ford, this world will never operate without horses as transportation. And I would love to know what that guy thinks now, looking back. Uh, love to know that. But anyway, all this initiative and all these things were preached of, and we all have these different ideas. And the whole point of the series is that we have a creator who created us with a purpose in mind, just like a car, with a purpose in mind. And I'm trying to get a better understanding about what, about what that is. So fathers, you're created for a purpose. Mothers, you're created for a purpose. Children, you're created for a purpose. And today is specifically, you know, set aside as we recognize, you know, fathers. And we've already had our preteens done something awesome this morning. They wanted to set something aside. And so we have donuts and bacon that they prepared for us. And also they want to share something from the stage with you. So I'm going to turn it over to our preteen class, and they are going to come to the stage. So if y'all would show them some love as our preteens come up. Hey, good morning. Uh, this is our preteens, and we just wanted to tell you guys how grateful that we are for the men in our life. You don't have to be a dad to have a positive influence on the children that you associate with, that you can become friends with, and their families. And um, there's lots of children that we see come through our doors, in and out, that need that positive role model. So we wanted to encourage you guys to give that love and that opportunity to these children um, that you see and you can form bonds with. And also, too, we wanted to thank you for being a part of our church and a part um, that people that we can look up to and be role models, even if you um, aren't a dad, if you're just a man, a cousin, an uncle, a brother. So they put together a little dance, and they wanted to um, say thanks for today.
It's who you are It's who you are Sometimes it's nice just to, uh, to be appreciated and uh, to be thankful and I know that they want to do something special so I just think it's awesome whenever we can put ourselves aside and think of somebody else and uh, I think it's kind of what makes Father's Day maybe sometimes a little harder is that uh, there's so much emphasis and so much drive and so much force that's put on the Mother's Day and there's Mother's Day's meals and flowers and you know Mother's Day is one of the largest attended uh, Sundays for churches um, across the entire nation uh, and, but Father's Day is often seen as something maybe a little, a little different. And maybe it has maybe a different idea of that. And I, I want to touch base on this. This is Genesis 1, 28. And I'm just going to read this first part of this because this is huge. And it says that God blessed, and so I want you to say this word with me, God blessed them. Let's say that again with me. I really want you to mean it. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, and subdue it. Them. And what we concluded last week was is that God created male and female as equals. They, they had a, an equal role, equally created, equally divinely created in the image of God. One sex is not above the other. And he told them this, that to be fruitful, multiply, and fill the earth. Now this comes with more than just spreading your seed. And we didn't understand this, is that anyone can procreate. Anyone can do that. But not just anyone can fulfill this role of what God has set out to be a father and a mother. And so what we're going to look today is that look at what the Bible has to say about this. And I think we're getting a good idea about what God intended whenever he created the role of a father and a mother. Because whenever you look at this, I think it's going to kind of resonate with some of us. Because some of you are going to be, hey, you know, I understand this. I, I see this role. I, I see this role. Others of you are going to say, you know what, I didn't have that example. I didn't have that example. And that's okay. Because whenever we see what God has to say about it, then we can make adjustments about what maybe we need to do, or maybe even our attitude. If you're going to talk about fathers, and you're going to talk about mothers, you have to start with children. Because if it wasn't for children, we wouldn't be parents. We wouldn't be fathers or mothers. And so this morning, uh, I had a donut and bacon with uh, Natty Cakes. Uh, she's our 10-year-old. And I said, Natty, thank you so much for making me, making me a dad. And she said, actually, I had nothing to do with you. That was all mama. And I went, eh. <laughs> Leave it to Natty Cakes to put things in perspective. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 6, uh, verse 1. And this kind of spells this out uh, about children. And it says uh, in verse 1, Children... Obey your parents as you would the Lord, because this is right. Now, as growing up uh, as children, this is kind of hard because you don't always want to listen to your parents. Because there's a, I'm not sure when it starts, and I don't know when it ends, but there's a time frame in which you think that your parents are not very smart. Uh, as growing up, you think that you are smarter than they are. They're, Again, I, I don't know when this happens. I don't know if it's when you, you turn three and you stop thinking that when you turn 18 or 30. When, I, don't, I don't know when it happens, but there's a time point here that you really don't want to obey because a lot of times we think that we are smarter we, and, we, and we know best. And there are times that we are right and they are wrong. But the fact of the matter is, is what the Bible calls us out here is to obey, is to obey but he gives this little clause on there, obey as you would unto the Lord. So if the Lord is in your presence and ask you, hey, can I have a glass of water? Would you not run to go get that? Would you not, I mean, would you not just run to go, to go grab that? And I remember growing up, we only had, you know, two channels. And if it was a perfect day, you got channel 19. So 511, some of y'all know what that's like. But 511 and 19, we had one of these Zenith TVs that sat on top of a table, and it had a turn dial to turn the knobs. We had rabbit ears coming out the top, and then later on we upgraded and got these big antenna that sat outside with the cable wire that came in and plugged into the TV. It was great because no longer we have to hold the TV antenna to get the reception, but we still had to go up and turn the knob. And I still remember on, I think it was Wednesdays, we would watch Rescue 911 and Unsolved Mysteries. 
and uh, this TV show. But I remember, you know, sometimes Dad would say, hey, can you, you turn that up? But that means what you had to do was not find the remote control. You were the remote. You had to get up and go over and turn the knob up. And then when it came to a commercial and it got too loud, it was, hey, can, you need to turn that down a little bit. So guess what? You, and you turned, it, you turned it down a little bit. When that program ended, you want to go to another channel, you had to get up and go click, click, click. And it finally went over to channel 11. Let's see what's on channel 19. And you finally get the clicks all the way over there. I had 19 coming in today. So let's go back to five. And so that's what, that's what that was. And it was just a part of our growing up. And uh, believe it or not, I miss those days. And I wish so bad I could do that with my kids because I'll never appreciate a remote control. It changed our life. We didn't want to obey. We didn't want to obey. And he says, obey as you would unto the Lord. And it's now like whenever my dad asks, hey, can you help us do something? Or mom asks, hey, can you, can you help us do something? I, my wife, her parents, hey, can, you, can y'all help us do something? We're like, yeah, what do you need? What, what can we help you do? And there's a lot of times that we can help. and We, we, we can be there. And there's other times that, that we can't. But he says this is that it's not like a choice. Not if it feels right, but obey your parents as you would the Lord because this is right. But wait a minute, some of us are, we're looking around here and we're all, we're all children. So at what point is the transition where you stop, you stop obeying? Well, I think there's a transition when your parents quit commanding. See, there's a time in which we end up growing up. There's a time in which we end up, you know, leaving home. And there's a few different times in which, in which that happens because we're all here today and we're children. We're all here and we're children. And so there's a time in which you may leave, you know, your parents' protection and, and, and their guidance. And to look at this, we need to look back at Genesis. And uh, I just want to share with, this, with you just for a moment. It says, Genesis 2, 24, it says, This is why a man leaves his father and mother and bonds with his wife, and they become one flesh. You know, one reason why we leave our parents' protection, one example when we leave our parents' protection is whenever we, we marry. We find that person, we, we leave home, and and we go to make our, our own home. We go to make our own home. And when, when we do this, we're becoming one flesh. We're becoming one family, one, one unit. This is one reason why we would leave. And so I'm, not, I'm no longer under my parents' care. Now, they still care about us very much so. But I'm not under their care. So whenever they ask for help, it's usually, you know, hey, if you got time or you're all not doing anything, you don't have dance going on, whatever, can, can you help? This is what we do. Some of you are not married yet, and, and that's okay because there's still a time in which you'll leave your parents' protection. You'll leave that home. First Corinthians chapter 13, it says this in verse 11. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put aside childish things. And what the Bible is telling us is that there's a point in time in which, you know, we grow up. We, we, we grow up. Now, the cool thing about being, you know, a parent is, is that you're still grown up, but there comes a time when you still get to play with toys. It's really cool. In, in, in our case, you know, I got to play with dolls because I have all girls. But then when they got into shooting guns, it's happy for everybody because now we get to do that. But we put away childish things. It's time to grow up. So then, where does this part about obeying here? Like how, how do we obey our parents? Well, again, there's this transition between obey and respect. See, as a child, as we're growing up, we ought to obey and we ought to respect. But if you look back at Ephesians 6, verse 2, it says this, Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with the promise. Now, there's a key, few key things here. Because this transition happens between obey, you're no longer under their command, you're no longer under their rule, but you still honor them. There's still this great amount of honor in which you respect them. And so if you were to define honor, it means high respect, great esteem. So there comes a point in time in which parents should be submissive to their kids and also that the kids should be submissive to the parents and you have this role that just beautifully takes place. Now it looks like a pretty picture, don't it? Church, it don't, it don't always happen that way. You, you don't always see this played out this way. When you do... It, it, is, it is beautiful. So what do you do when you're in this spot? You set the example. You could be the one that breaks that habitual chain of, of maybe a, a bad line or maybe you didn't have that 
good fatherly or motherly role. And that's what verse 2 says here, but it calls out, honor your father and your mother. See, you can't talk about a father without talking about the mother, and you can't talk about the mother without the father, and you can't talk about either one without children because that's what makes it happen. See how this unit all comes together? It, it's, it's beautiful. It, it's beautiful. And I, so many times, my kids, they just, they say this, that I, I just, I want to make you proud. I, I want to make you proud. Recently, they had their dance recitals. And I'm like, was you proud of me? I'm like, yeah. Yeah, I mean, they just, they want to make you proud. Again, the way of honor. Now, there's another part of this verse that it calls out, and it makes reference to the Old Testament in Exodus, one of the commandments. And it says that this commandment is the first commandment with the promise that if you honor them, Ephesians chapter three, or Ephesians 6, verse 3, it says this, so that it may go well with you and that you may have a long life in the land. It comes with a promise. And I believe what it's talking about is this, is this harmony that takes place. And some of you don't have that. You, you, you don't have that. Some of you have parents that's not worthy of respect. I think we can respect the position without respecting the person. Some people we have to love from a distance. Some of you have had to have a hard role in that you've had to be the parent to your parents. We've seen that. And you've had to be the parent role to your parents. You've had to be the one to act like an adult when they're acting like children in their 60s or whatever. This is where you're fulfilling that role. You're still fulfilling that role. You're doing double duty. Because you're trying to be a parent to your kids, but you're also having to parent your parent. There's much respect for you. And this is what he's talking about here, is that sometimes you have to show that tough love. You ever had to do that with your kids? Man, I, I have. And I don't, I don't like it. And this is what verse 4 leads up to. Because sometimes it's hard. Verse 4 says this, Fathers, don't stir up anger in your children, but bring them up in the training and the instruction of the Lord. That's what Dad, I called it too. Training. Discipline. I didn't like it either. And he would always say this, and it made no sense. Son, it's going to hurt me more than it hurts you. No, it ain't. You're alive, because it hurts. It hurts. And, uh, and I know that we all can relate to different acts and different things of discipline, and I never, I never remember my dad ever whipping me, but I remember he would get in that strong, stern voice. And you knew dad meant business. You knew. And this part comes to this, that not stirring up this anger in your children, but in training and instruction. This is what it means, is that discipline and instruction should go hand in hand. You should never stir up righteous anger. You're going to stir up this anger, this bitterness towards you. You never discipline without instruction. It goes hand in hand. And it should never be done pleasantly. And we should never enjoy it. We should never enjoy it. And I remember, uh, I don't remember how we got in trouble. I just remember being in trouble with my dad almost being in tears because he was going to have to discipline. And I didn't quite totally understand that. He didn't enjoy it. He didn't, he didn't enjoy it. And we shouldn't enjoy it. I mean, you, you shouldn't grin like, oh, man. It shouldn't be enjoyable. And even with my own kids. I don't, I don't like it. And again, I was talking with Natty Cakes, and she got in trouble, and I was talking with her, and she's like, why does discipline have to hurt? And <laughs> if you just knew Natty Cakes, you'd understand. Like, well, it's not supposed to be, you know, candy. <laughs> it's not supposed to be like Christmas. Like, oh boy, here comes Daddy. No, it ain't like that. Um, I think there's a better way to do it. I'm like, Natty, if you come up with a better way, then please let me know. And then by the next day, she understands that we have to have this train and discipline and instruction. And he calls out fathers here. He calls out fathers. And I think that's by coincidence. Because we, we lead this charge in, in, in the home. We, we lead this. That we should not necessarily like discipline, but it's necessary. It's necessary. We need to train, discipline, and direct them. And this, it's not just punishment. It comes with, with love. And this verse in Psalm really brings this out. Psalm 103, verse 13, it says, As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on all 
on those who fear Him. It must be done in love. In love. And I know that sometimes my kids have got these big tears coming down, coming down their cheek. You know, I'm like, baby, I love you. And they're coming up and you just discipline and they're crying too. Like, Daddy, I love you. I'm sorry. And they're just you. Love. Compassion. Could you imagine what would happen if God disciplined us without this love, without this compassion? Church, where would we be? Some of us in our lives and in growing up, we've been disciplined without this compassion. Again, what do you do? You change it. You be the role model. You be the parent that you wish your parents were. You be the example you wish you had. You be it. Because you could be the one that can change this. See, out of this compassion and this discipline and this training, it's not a, an opportunity for you to exploit your strength, but to exploit your compassion. Your, your compassion. It must be done in love, in love, in love. And some of you are here today, and you're like, "Well, I'm I'm not I'm not a father, or my my kids have grown, I've grown on." Yes, but you're a grandparent. You see, grandparents had this sweet spot. They had this sweet spot because they they'll try to spoil and all that, but there should be a mutual respect, where they still carry on what their kids are training their kids, and vice versa. And I remember having this conversation with uh, my father-in-law. He's like, man, I can't wait till those grandbabies get here. I'm going to spoil them, let them do whatever they want. I went, no, you ain't. No, you ain't. Because I'm not taking back a hellion home with me. So you're going to discipline them and do what's needed. And uh, it was a little rough there as we, uh, uh, we ironed that out. But there, there was a mutual respect there. See how this comes back to this children? See, we often parent the way that we look at children. We often parent the way that we view our parents or the way that we view that role. And hear me out on this. You will not always get discipline and correction right. I've had to apologize because sometimes I got carried away and maybe got upset over something that was not that big of a deal. Sometimes my wife comes as, what in that... A little harsh. And there's times to go, nope, absolutely not. I was right all the way. But then there's other times, I'm like, maybe. And I go up, I have some sorry. That, did you understand what you did was wrong? But I was wrong too. And blah, 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 blah. And then she'll say these words that are so hard for a dad to hear. It's okay, dad. I forgive you. Whew. Talking about feeling your heart beat in your throat. This mutual respect comes out. This mutual respect, this compassion. Do you see how this goes hand in hand? About children and fathers and mothers, you're not left out because he already said in Ephesians 2 about how this respect comes out. And so as I look through the Bible to find this example of uh, this mother and what this role is, because we need to define this. We're, so far we define children as this obey and honor. We're defining parent or this idea of father through training, correction, discipline, and compassion. But then mothers have such an important role because all this should complement one another. And it says in Proverbs 31, verse 20, we're just going to look at three verses here, starting with verse 26. It says, she opens her mouth with wisdom and loving instruction is on her, term, on her tongue. Again, this instruction is coming out. This instruction I remember whenever me and my wife were uh, wanting to get married and my dad got us a book and said, if you want to get married, do this book. It was a workbook about budget and finance and all that. And uh, we were doing this and uh, we're setting up this budget and we were almost in tears like, you know what, we, we can't afford to get married. Like, I don't know how we can live separate, but for whatever reason, according to this book, we can't get married and live peaceably, financially together. We can't do it. And we were doing this, and Mom came in uh, to her room. We had this couch and this table there, and she's like, so, how's it going? We're like, well, hey, it ain't going so good. She took that book away, and she said, if you kids want to get married, you get married. And she took the book away, and I've never seen it since. I don't know what happened to it. Loving instruction is on her tongue. Wisdom and loving instruction is on her tongue. 
See, dads are great for whenever you had that bicycle crash. They caught falling off the horse. Dads are great for dusting you off. Yeah, you're okay. And setting you back on and going, all right, let's do that again. Dads are great at that. Moms are great at saying, all right, honey, let's, let's talk this out. Let's listen. Wisdom and loving instruction is on her tongue. I love verse 27. She watches over the activities of her household and is never idle. This doesn't mean that you can't have a messy house. What this means is, is that you know what's going on. Ladies, I don't know how you do it. Mom was great at it too. And somehow, you ladies, you can be fully engaged in a conversation, fixing supper, washing the dishes, and still know what the kids are fussing about in the back bedroom. I don't know how you do it, but you do it. And we would, you know, me and my brother, we would try to ask my mom, you know, hey, how, how you do it? She's like, I got eyes in the back of my head. I never understood that. It's just because she's gifted. And she's gifted in ways that men, you ain't. She's got skills that you ain't got. And ladies, your spouse has got skills that you don't possess. Did you see how all this compliments one another? Because, see, I don't know everything that's going on in the house at the same time. I, I can do one thing. I know i said it many times. I can do one thing and one thing only, but not, not Amanda. No, she can, she can do a lot. She, she can do a lot. She manages it well. You know what's going on in your household. You know what your kids are up to. You know what's going on on Instagram and with their friend's life. You know what's going on at school. You, you know this stuff. And because this harmony that the Bible has painted because this, this picture, this, it's almost like a puzzle that fits perfectly together because of this. Look at verse 28. It says, Her sons rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also praises her. And I think this is huge. I think this is huge. Because whenever you see this played out, whenever you see this possessed, you have this. One thing that my dad has always taught me is that people's lives, others' lives should be blessed because you're in it. Whenever they see you coming, they should be going, oh yes, not oh no. And when they leave, or when you leave, they should be going, oh no, instead of oh yes. Other people's lives should be better because we're in it. Ladies, your children's lives should be better because you're in it. Some of you, are not parents. That's okay. Because some of you are the cool aunt. You're the cool sister. You're the cool cousin. Some of you are the great uncle. Some of you are the smelly uncle. It doesn't matter. Kids, others should be blessed because you're in it. And it says that her sons rise up and call her blessed. Blessed. There's a lady that uh, I'm friends with. She's in her 80s. And she'll send us Mother's Day cards and Father's Day cards. She'll send birthday cards. She has no kids. For uh, Halloween or for Christmas, she'll always make these suckers and give them to our kids. And our, our girls, they call her Miss Sarah. There's this respect there. And she's had an influence. She's had an impact on my kids in her 80s. She's had an impact. And my kids respect her. They rise up and call her blessed. So I want you to see that this today when we're talking about fathers, when we're talking about mothers, it doesn't mean that you have to be one to fulfill this role of honor and respect. It means that you just need to be there. Be engaged. And when you're engaged, I love this, what it says that her husband says, her husband also praises her. You can't praise somebody that's not there. You can't praise somebody that's not there. They want you to be engaged engaged husbands this is also called to us that we need to surround ourselves with other men who praise their spouse if you've got people in your life that are down on their spouse you need to start separating yourself I'm not saying you have to cut completely ties but you need to separate yourself from those you need to surround yourself with those that build up their spouse these are the people that I've got in my life in my key circle these are the people that I've got I've never heard any one of them talk bad about their spouse but praise her. Praise her. Praise her. Now my favorite part of this is verse 29. 
Because some of you ladies and some of you men are here thinking that uh, you can't do it. That's why I like verse 29. Because some of you ladies are like, man, I can't fill this role. I can't, I can't do it. But in verse 29 it says, many women are capable, but you surpass them all. Is that not beautiful written? I mean, just beautiful language. I tell my wife all the time, like, your favorite wife. <laughs> She's like, I know. <laughs> or sometimes she'll say, I, I hope. And what I'm saying is, is that of all the ladies out there, you surpass them all. I know some of you are probably some great wives. Some of you are some great ladies. I, I know you are. But my wife, oh my, she's, she's it. She is it. And I hope you feel the same thing about your spouse. Oh, man. I hope you're just saying the same thing. I mean, she's it. Like, I know yours might be good, but mine's better. You know, it's almost an argument because, no, mine's better. And you see this, we're talking about this, this role as a mother, but it's the husband who praises her. Many women are capable, but you surpass them all. Many women are capable, but you surpass them all. Ladies that are not married, you need to find someone that can build you up like this. You surpass them all. You surpass them all. Some of you had some bad experiences in marriage. Some of you had bad experiences in parenting or the way that you were parented. It's okay. Because you can have a new trajectory, a new path, and you look for someone that believes in you, that praises you, and that makes you feel like you surpassed them all. Oh, there's days that you're still going to mess up, and there's days that we're always going to get it wrong. And that's okay. Because the right person will look through our flaws. And if we're doing things out of love and compassion, when we do this, we're going to do it in such a way that forgiveness will be given and accepted. Compassion. I don't know where you are right now in your life, but there's three aspects here that we need to kind of be working on. First is as children. And some may we need to honor more. We need to maybe even obey wherever we're at in that role. When your parents tell you to clean up your room, kids, it's time to clean up your room. There'll come a time you can clean your room up when you want to, but that's when you have a place of your own. From now now, clean your room. Do as you're told. Respect. One of the greatest things that we can teach our children is to say, yes, sir, yes, ma'am, whenever they're asked to do something. A respect. So some of you, it's time to obey your parents. Others of you, you've already passed that transition. It's time to honor. You, you, you honor them. And some of you are going to have to honor from a distance, and I get that. Some of you got to show some tough love. You are the parent in that role to your own parents, and you have to take a step back and love them from a distance. And whatever it takes, honor. Honor them. Set that example. Fathers, some of you need to discipline. You need to act more on discipline and this training but, and this care, but you've got to do it with this love, this discipline with love, training with love. And that word is compassion, that we have compassion. And sometimes we try to hold our kids up to such a high bar that there's no way that they can obtain it and then discipline on it. Compassion. We need compassion. Ladies, rule your household. Know it well. Know what's going on. And let wisdom and knowledge roll from your tongue. This is what the Bible calls us out. That others may rise up and call you blessed. Now, I don't know what's going on in your life right now or what it is that you need to focus on. And maybe some of you are just to the point where you don't even like Father's Day. You, you're bitter. You're, it's bitter towards you. You know, I had a good example laid before you. Church, that is okay. What we're challenging you with is to be the example. Be the example. You set the bar right now. You lead. You guide. You train and lead with compassion. And you watch what a difference it'll make in your kids' lives. Some of you don't have kids, or maybe some of your kids are already grown on, and you're getting to play grandparents. That's great. You be the grandparents, and you can spoil a little bit, but again, there's coming with this loving instruction. This loving instruction. I love what uh, my mother-in-law does with with our kids, she makes them feel so special. She invests in them. She knows what they like and, and, what, and what they don't like. Our oldest one loves to cook, and, and she's guiding on that path because she's got experience with that, and she's guiding on that path. I love to see what, what my mom is doing with her kids and teaching them how to sew and how to think for themselves 
and to work with their hands. I even see what my dad uh, is doing with as far as a grandparent role and, and how to help and experiencing them to stuff like digging a ditch and welding. And it's like so neat to watch whatever role it is that you find yourself in. What we're telling you is what you're challenged with this morning is to be the example, whatever that is. Whether you're married or not married, whether you have kids or don't have kids, whether you have grandparents or what, whatever it is, just be the example. Be the example. If you need to be the folly role, then you be that example. If you need to show this respect and this honor, this obey, then be the example. Be the example. I remember in high school, there was this girl that I was talking to and was talking about our parents and she kept dogging her parents and all that. And I was like, you know what? This just ain't going to work out. She's like, you never said anything bad about your parents. I was like, no. I ain't going to. And we was on the phone and I went, click. The phone rang me back immediately and I did not answer it because I knew he was on the other line. But that ended that relationship because of this respect about how they treated their parents. So here's going to be my last guidance to you and you will not find this in the Bible. This is just PJ's words of wisdom. You see how somebody treats their parents? Ladies, you see how a man respects his mom, his dad? It's a good indication of how they're going to treat you. Be the example. You want somebody that's worthy of your love? Be the example. You want to be a good parent? Be the example. You didn't have that good role? Be the example. Whatever that is, be the example. Wherever it is you need to focus on, just be the example. Could you imagine what would happen if we would all be this example? We have this idea. Not that we're going to get it always right, but that we could just be this example. Could you imagine what kind of impact that would have? That you could recall Father's Day of 2019 at Uplift Church whenever you heard this message about what God called us out about this role of children and fathers and mothers and which we were called out to look at this example, what was spelled out, and now be the example. Be the example. Church, could you imagine how your family might be different if you could be the example? And some of you here today are like, but you don't, you don't understand what, I, what it's like at my house. I say pretty much like what it is at our house. There's some chaos going on. Laundry's not always put up. Things are not always clean. The cars are rarely ever clean. There's usually some kind of funky smell going on in the car. And sometimes the toilet gets stopped up. Our house is a lot like your house. But in every house, regardless of what's going on, there should be some obeying, some honor. There should be training and discipline with love. And there should be people to rise up and call those ladies blessed. Could you imagine how your life would be different if we would set the example We've got people that's watching us to be the example. Like that girl I was telling you back in high school, people that are watching us to be the example. And this morning you've been called out to be the example. So you maybe you've got so many years of maybe of, of going down the wrong path and now we can turn a new path. We can set forth now to this example of what God's called us out to be. So I don't know where you're at in your life right now in your walk with God and your walk with your family or in these roles. But what God's calling us out today is that we would set the example. Let's pray together. Father, we love you and we thank you for your word and how this morning you've called us out that we would go forth and fulfill these roles. Whether we are children and it's time to obey or respect, honor. Whether we're fathers and it's time that we call out that we would do discipline, uh, in loving care or whether we mothers and take care of our household and know what's going on and fulfill those roles with excellence God this morning you have called us out that we would be the example and I pray God this morning that you would just search us out and reveal yourself unto us that we might set the example for our family that we might set the example for others to follow whether we know they're watching or not our neighbors, our friends, our children, even our parents. May we set the example for others to follow. 
as you continue to pray, there's some of you here today, and there's a part of this message that's really spoke to you. There's an area in your life you need to work on, whether it is as children, whether old or young, children, uh, maybe as a father role in this loving care discipline. Some of you, as mothers, to take care of your household and know what's going on, that these words of wisdom and knowledge that flow through your tongue because that's not always what comes out. Whatever these roles are that you need to work on, thrash in this morning that you would call out to God and you would accept your role, whatever that is. Whatever that looks like. Not that you're always going to get it right, but that you're up for the challenge. I'm asking you if you would right now. If this message has spoken to you today, you know where you need to work out right now. You know what you need to work on. Would you call out to God right now? Call out to God right now. And whatever that capacity is, whatever that role is. And ask Him to help you. To guide you. To help you as you go through this process. To help you as you go through these roles. Because there's days that you're not going to get it all right. And that's okay. If we can ask for forgiveness, don't want to get boxed short. God will pick you back up, dust you off, and set you on your way. I'm going to give you a minute just to talk to God about whatever it is, whatever role, whatever capacity you need to work on. From a children's point of view, fatherly, motherly, grandparent, whatever that role is. It's going to give you an opportunity to talk to you. Father, thank you for your word and how much you speak to us. And we pray right now, God, that you just continue to speak. May the presence of your Holy Spirit just go through this room. Reveal to us, Father, what we need to work on in our lives. Maybe where we need to uh, express forgiveness. Maybe where we need to ask forgiveness. As you continue to pray, there's some of you here today. Maybe it's with one of these roles. Uh, maybe one of these areas that you need to work on. You just need prayer. Maybe it's difficult. you got something going on in your life. Whatever it may be. you got to have somebody to pray for you this morning. May I have that opportunity? Nobody's looking around. I just, I just want to pray for you. Would you just raise your hand and say, Hey, I just need somebody to pray for me. i got something going on in my life. You pray for me, thank you. I'm going to pray for you, thank you. Others, yeah, I'll pray for you. Absolutely, I'll pray for you. Anybody else, hey, yeah, I just need you to pray for me. I always pray for these people who've got things going on in their life, regardless of what it is. Medically, you know, family-wise, or with uh, parenting, or with uh, their own parents, or dealing with children, whatever it is, God. We just pray, God, that you would just lead them and guide them. We just up with them to you, Father, that God, you would empower them with your Holy Spirit, that they may be able to, may be able to accomplish all that you set before them. And God, that they may be able to do it with excellence. God, help us for the times in which we fall short and we feel that we can't do it. Proverbs tells us that in this verse, you surpass them all. God, we thank you so much for these words. Help us, God, that we might be able to go forth and do all that you set before us to do. God, that we might be able to be the man, the woman, the husband, the father. God, that we might be able to be that person. That person to set the example. That we might be able to be the example for others to follow. God, I pray for every father here. God, who are watching online, that you would bless them. And that they would step up and fulfill their roles the very best that they possibly can, God. Equip them with all the necessary resources that they need to be able to do their job and to do it well. God, I pray for every man in this room that you prepare him for the road ahead, that he may be able to leave this room here today, Father, with a charge to obey, honor, respect, train with discipline, that he may be able to set the examples for not only his children or grandchildren, but for even neighbors or friends, or maybe, a Father, for a young dad to look up to. Help him, Father God, as he be the example. Father, we thank you for the ladies in our lives. 
We pray, God, that they would know how special they are. God, and it is my prayer that their family, their spouse would rise up and call her blessed to make her feel like that verse 6 did, that she surpasses them all. That she surpasses them all. God, I know that life gets tough. and Marriage is tough. Parenting is tough. Being a father is tough. Being a mother is tough. Raising kids and guiding them is, is tough. And so I know that there's times that we don't always get it right, Father, but just help us that we can ask for forgiveness and be able to extend forgiveness when it's needed. God, I pray for every family that's here that they're going to be able to leave here today having a better understanding of their role that you've called us out on through the Bible, that we may be able to know it and to do it well. God, we thank you so much for this day set aside for our fathers, and we thank you for our dads who uh, taught us, who are still teaching us, who are still guiding us and instructing us, and help us, God, that we may be able to show honor back in return. We thank you, God, for this day, and we pray that as we leave here today that all of our words, our actions, and even our expressions would show people that we have a relationship with you. It's in the powerful name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Would you take a moment to give God some awesome praise? God.